What's up guys, Justin Fuller here. Today I'm outside of a 2021 Honda Accord Sport, specifically that 2.0. So today we're gonna go over a couple things. First, how it compares to the 1.5 below it, and then secondarily, what's its competition and how do they compare? Let's hop on in. just stop so that you can one compare the two liter to the 1.5 so I'm gonna throw up on the screen what the horsepower comparison is and then right after that I'll also throw up what the miles per gallon comparison is so you can have an understanding for hey if I want to drop down to that 1.5 kind of what am I losing out on as far as horsepower but what am I gaining in the miles per gallon now that we've looked at that I'm gonna throw something else up on the screen I want to throw up what the horsepower comparison is with this vehicle with some of the competitors out there in the market so I'll throw that up on the screen so you can kind of check that out and get an understanding for hey how does this actually compete now, after we've looked at that, we're gonna do one more comparison here. So I wanna show you what the miles per gallon. So this car gets 22 in the city and 32 on the highway. So I wanna look at what some of the competitors are out there so you can get an understanding for, hey, if I wanna get this car, I want this horsepower, what is it competing against as far as miles per gallon goes? So let's do a quick walk around of this car and just talk about what it has. So from the exterior right here, you can of course see that it has 19 inch alloy wheels on this vehicle. So whether you're going up or dropping down, you are gonna lose out on that size of wheel. So just be aware of that. If you're looking for that more sporty performance based look, that is something that's gonna land on whether the 1.5 liter sport or the two liter sport. Now, as we come in here, I'll point out that you do of course have body color door handles. Um, this does have smart key entry so I can just grab, it'll unlock and I can lock off the three buttons right there. So easy enough to access either one when I wanna do it. It's as simple as that. Now you do have black uh, colored, uh, excuse me, mirrors, and these are powered, so you do have control over that. We already talked about the 19 inch alloy wheels that you see down below. Now coming across here, I do have LED daytime running lights, and I do also have LED fog lights down here. And then I've got my standard setup halogen uh, beams on the front. Now, it does have a smoked grill on the front, so I do like the front end of this car. They kind of incorporate that smoked uh, with the black plastics underneath. And then right below the license plate bracket is where you'll see, uh, if you can see that, that is gonna be where the Honda sensing radar is located at. All right, so as we move around the side of the vehicle, I'll talk about airbags. So in this car, you've got eight airbags now. So it's a little bit different from the previous generations. I've got two front airbags, which also has two knee airbags, which is the newer portion, two side airbags, and then two full curtain airbags with rollover sensors. So as far as safety goes, you got a lot going in this car. Now, while we're talking about safety, there is something else I wanna bring up. This car does have adaptive cruise control. Uh, and with that, it means when I'm going down the road, I can set it to uh, use that radar and a camera, which is actually right up here. You can see this trap is like cut out of the tent right there. And it's gonna detect cars in front of me. As it does, it can slow down the car. Now, using that same piece of technology, it also has a collision mitigation braking system. Meaning that if it's looking like I'm gonna rear in another car, first to alert me, then it can actually apply the brakes to help prevent the accident. Now, that's just one of the many Honda sensing facts or, or features I should say that the car has. You also have lane keep assist, which will keep you centered in your lane and road departure mitigation. So if I'd start to drive off the shoulder of the road, it'll give me an audible alert and shake the wheel. So know that you have some of these features working to your advantage. Now, as we wrap around the side of the car, I will point out that this car has been tinted, not from the manufacturer, but at this dealership. So that is the one add on that you're gonna see on this vehicle. So just be aware of that. Now, as we wrap around to the back of the car, I do wanna point out, you've got the black shark fin up there, which is kind of nice because it does trim up well uh, with the black colored uh, mirrors. And then on the back of the vehicle, it does have this black body spoiler right here. So that's just indicative of what you'll find on the sport model. Now on the back of the car, you can't of course see it's badge. Uh, and then down below, it'll be badge 2.0 sport. Uh, so you're good to go there. And then your backup camera is actually gonna be right up underneath. I wanna bring you into the truck and show you a couple different features here. So the first thing is it does come with these carpeted floor mats, so that's just standard with the vehicle. Not every make is always gonna offer that. Now inside of the car, you will have a 60-40 split, meaning that I can pop down either one of these sides using a handle right here or a handle right here so I don't have to have the whole bar down. Now, underneath, you'll find your spare and, of course, all your accessories here. So you can see that I've got my jack, and then beneath that, I have a full diameter spare, meaning it's the full size, just not the full width. And then along with that, you will see this small funnel, which we'll explain here in just one sec. So, hey, Justin, what's this tiny funnel for? Hey, Justin, glad you asked. Let's talk about that funnel. So what I, this is actually for is related to your gas cap. So the first thing I wanna remind you is that your gas is connected to your door lock. So if your doors are unlocked, you can simply push here and pop this open, which is really cool. Uh, that way I don't have to go digging into the car looking for a switch or a button. Now in here, I will point out that this has a valve on it, right? So I can't just unscrew something, which is also nice because it means I won't set up a check engine light if it's not on there tight enough. 
But what happens is if I run out of gas and I need to fill it up with gas and I'm not at a gas station, I need something to hold this open so that I can put gas in it. That is where this funnel comes into play. So with this funnel, I could put this down in this hole to hold it open, and then I could pour gas into the car using whatever I had, so whether it be a gas can, a water bottle, a milk jug, whatever it may be that I had available to me at the time. So that's what the purpose of this is right here. All right guys, so here I am in the second row of this vehicle. So the first thing I wanna point out is headroom. So while you can't see the top of my head, I can actually sit as tall as I can and I still can't touch even with a hat on. So I do have a good amount of headroom being a six footer in this vehicle. Now the next thing that I wanna point out is of course the leg room. So if you can see right here, I've got quite a bit of leg room and I have this pushed almost all the way back uh, because I wanted to know, could a six footer fit behind a six footer? So as you can see, you absolutely can. So as you come into the car, I wanna point out a couple things. So the first being is that you have a combo mix here. So you've got cloth down the center and then you're gonna have leather kind of running the sides of the vehicle. Uh, so it's kind of a combo mix of this vehicle when it comes to the interior. So if you're looking for full leather, you'd wanna climb up to that EXL model. Uh, anything below this is gonna be just a cloth, which you would see right here in the center. So I like that it's a hybrid mix. It kind of mixes things up where it's a little bit nicer, but it's not full leather because some people don't want the full leather, right? And then as we move down, I'll point out that of course I do have AEC vents back here, which is always important, especially if you got little ones or dogs back here. Uh, and then I have two USBs. So if we are taking a longer trip, uh, there are USBs in the back of the car and then there's two USBs in the front of the car. So both my front passengers and my back passengers will have access to that. All right guys, so before we hop in the front of the vehicle and kind of go over the dash and all that, I wanna to talk to you about the seating arrangement in the front of the vehicle. So as we pull in here, I'll point out that of course you have a 12-way powered seat uh, on your driver's side here. So I can of course affect up, down, back, forth, my back support, and then my lower lumbar support right here. Now over on that other side, it's gonna be a manual seat. So if you're looking for a powered seat over there, you're gonna to wanna to climb models up to that EXL model. So just be aware of that if this is a vehicle that you're looking at and you're thinking you want that powered on the side. However, that other powered will only be a four-way powered, meaning you can adjust it front and back and then your backrest if you jump up model. All right, guys, so let's talk about the dash of this vehicle. So what I'm gonna do is actually start over here on the far left side of it and talk to you about a few buttons. So the first one being right here, this is vehicle stability assist. This works with your traction control. So in the event that you go into a skid, it's gonna transfer power to whichever wheel is getting better traction in the car. So this is always on and running. Now above that, if you press this button, this is gonna be related to your Honda Sensing, right? So when I click on this, it will pull up a menu screen for me. And immediately you're gonna see it right here. And it's gonna walk me through three different features to let me know if they're on. And that's road departure mitigation, which I mentioned earlier. If I start to drive off the shoulder road, it'll give me an audible alert and then it'll actually start to vibrate the wheel for me. And then secondarily, it's gonna pull up my blind spot information system, which we did not talk about earlier, but I will point out that in the mirrors, you do have blind spot information system. So you will have a little logo right here that will light up if there's a car in your blind spot. And if you decide to start to get over, it will actually start to audibly alert you to let you know, hey, there is somebody in your blind spot, be aware of that. Now below that one, you're gonna find your collision mitigation braking system. So this one I did mention earlier, and what that is, is if it's looking like I'm gonna rear in another car, first I'll get an audible alert, I'll get a visual alert in the dash, and then it'll actually start to apply the brakes to help prevent the accident. So it's a fantastic feature, and it's always on and running unless you turn this feature off. Now, while I mention that, sometimes you get asked, hey Justin, can you turn these features off? And absolutely, any of these features you can turn off. Not exactly sure why you'd want to, I wanna keep all my precious cargo, dog, family, and everybody else in my car, Safe, but know that you can if you want to. Now, let's talk about the steering wheel. Now on the steering wheel on the left side is where you're gonna find your Bluetooth controls and then of course some of your menu screen controls. So I'll start you on the menu. So if I press this home button right here, you're gonna see a digital menu appear right here. Now from here, I can use this little round deal here to toggle up and down through that menu. So you can see as I roll it, it rolls with me. And let's just talk about what's in here. So you can see that I have a tachometer right there, right? So easy enough, I wanna see my tack. All I gotta do is press enter. And now I've got just a classic tack right there. Now, as I scroll down range and fuel, it's exactly what you think. I just want, you know, my fuel consumption, miles per gallon, this trip, that sort of thing. Uh, and then speed and time also related to that. Now, audio wise, I like this. It'll show you right there. And then if I scroll up or down, it will give me the option to toggle through anything I have available to me. So you can see USB, AM, FM. Uh, if I had Bluetooth connected, Android Auto or anything like that, I would have additional options available to me, which that would be the smartphone option, which would be Android Auto or Apple CarPlay. So jumping back out of that, you've got your phone right here. So to access any of your, uh, your contacts to make calls and that sort of thing, 
you could absolutely do. Traffic signs is one of the coolest ones I like. So you see this rectangle right here. If I'm driving down the road, what it'll do is it'll actively read signs on the road using the camera that's right up in here. And so when it detects like if you're in a, in, let's say in a construction zone and you pick up a new uh, sign, it'll tell you what that speed limit is right in there. Uh, so a really cool feature, whereas GPS might locate and tell you, hey, this is what the speed limit is on this road. It won't know if you're in like a construction zone. So a really cool feature that I love about this vehicle. So let's keep toggling on through here. Driver support is going to be related to your Honda sensing features uh, as I move down driver attention monitor So after a certain period of time if you're not really touching the gas pedal or brake because you may be using the adaptive cruise control And your steering wheel if you're using lane keep assist will kind of keep you centered It's gonna to start to alert you because it's recognizing that you're not doing as much as maybe it would like And it just wants to make sure that you're not getting drowsy. So that's the function of this um, driver attention level monitor. All right, so one more down, rear seat belt reminder. Uh, so this is a new feature in the 21 model. At any point, uh, when you first get in the car, this will light up and it'll let you know to make sure that the seat belts are on in your back passengers. So it's a really cool feature if you got little ones who are known to maybe put the seatbelt on or not put it on and say they did. This is one of those extra safety features that Honda now offers in this vehicle. Now, one more down is gonna be your maintenance reminder. So you can get your oil life right here. When you get down to 15%, it'll give you an uh, alert and then it'll throw a code at you. You can check that code online. It'll tell you uh, what they're gonna recommend when you go into the dealership or wherever you go, whether it be oil, oil and filters and so on and so forth. So it's just kind of nice to have to kind of get a better expectation for what you're gonna see. Uh, and then your warning. So if I left the door open, the hood's open, the trunk's open, that would be the warning system right here. All right, so past that, I've got my volume controls right here, my back button. So if I ever jump into that menu and I need to back out of stuff, that's what this button is for. Now below that, I've got my Bluetooth control. So to answer a call, hang up call, and use voice command. So call so-and-so, that sort of thing. Now this is also gonna work with Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, meaning I can press and hold and once I hear like the beep for Siri, so I would press and hold until I hear that beep, then I can say, hey Siri, you know, text this person or call this person or navigate to this direction or play this song, right? So this is gonna be a dual purpose button in this vehicle. Now moving over to the other side of the steering wheel. This is where two more of the Honda sensing features are gonna be. So the first thing we need to talk about uh, is of course gonna be right here. Right, so this is how I just wanna set my speed when I'm using uh, my cruise control, right? So I get up to speed, I set it, right? Now I've got my speed held, and then I can, of course, lower the speed and raise the speed. Now, if I'm using adapter cruise control, I can use this button right here. And when I do, what you're gonna see is those boxes appear. Now, the more boxes, the more space it's gonna keep between me and the car in front of me. And what I mean by that is, it's gonna set my speed to 65. If a guy gets in front of me and slows down, it's gonna keep designated space by using the radar up in the front end of the car, uh, down at the bottom below the license plate bracket and this camera, right? So it's bouncing off that car, looking at it, and then it's gonna say, okay, I need to keep this designated space between us, right? So really cool feature. Now, if you're thinking, hey, Justin, I just want classic cruise. I don't necessarily want all that going on. No big deal. If you press and hold this button right here, you can toggle between those two. So I can switch back to ACC mode if I press it and hold again. Now it's in classic cruise, right? So easy enough to toggle between the two. Now the next button is gonna be lane keep assist and that's button right here. So when I press this button, you're gonna see some dotted lines appear up here like the lines on the road. Now what lane keep assist does is, it detects the lines on the road so that if I start to drift to the left or right, it'll keep me centered in my lane and it's using this camera up here to do it. So just be aware that's how it's doing it. Now this is a fantastic feature if you're taking like a long road trip and you just want a little bit of extra help to keep you kind of centered. However, if you are one of those people who does not use your blinkers and you like to change lanes a lot, this is gonna be kind of an annoyance to you so maybe you don't wanna turn this on so fair warning other than that though i do think it's a great feature so that you don't accidentally drift because you got distracted you spilled your coffee your dog jumped on you your kid said something and you turn around and looked away from the road that's a great reason to use this tool right here now this car is a sport model so it does offer uh, these paddle shifters as you can see right here so i've got a plus symbol on this one and then over on the side i've got a minus symbol so i can upshift and downshift the car through the 10 speed transmission that it has so that's the purpose of these just to give you a little bit more power uh, or i should say control over the performance of the car all right guys so let's talk about the touch screen inside this vehicle. So this is your general home screen where you're gonna find your basic functions and features of the car. Now, the first one being your phone. So accessing Bluetooth to be able to get to your contacts and make phone calls and whatnot. So all you gotta do is connect up your phone. But I'm gonna show you how to connect with your phone a different way here in just a second. So let's go to settings here for a quick second here and talk about a couple of them. Now, for the most part, I don't go through a whole lot of these, but I do like to talk about the vehicle settings because there are a couple features in here you might be interested in. So if we scroll up to door and window, now under door and windows, you're gonna find your locks uh, to the vehicle, which is kind of important for a lot of different people. So the car is set up when you hit 10 miles an hour, it'll automatically lock the doors of the car, which some people like, or when you shift to park, they like to turn it on or they like to turn it completely off and just control the locks themselves. So know that that's right here. Now, when it comes to unlocking the door, you got to auto door unlock down here if you select that. 
The car is set up right now where if the driver's side door opens, it'll then unlock the remaining doors of the car. Now, I'm not a huge fan of this feature only because sometimes it takes that person a little bit longer to get their belongings together and everybody else is fiddling with their doors trying to find the lock to get it open to where they can get out of the car. So I sometimes like to change this to when the uh, car is shifted to park or the ignition is turned off or completely turn the, the feature off. So just know that you have available options to you. Now, the last one I think is probably the most important one to me. And this is the walk away auto lock feature. So this is currently turned off. I have turned it on here. What this is, is I get out of my car with my key with me and we get 10 feet from the car. It will automatically lock the doors of the car for me. So it's great for that kind of person who gets halfway into the grocery store and realizes, oh my God, my laptop's in the front of my book bag and I'm not sure I locked the doors. I got to go back out there. I'm not going to be able to focus while I'm in here. Well, if you had this feature on, the minute you got 10 feet from the car, it'll automatically lock them. So if you missed out on locking them, you've got backup to help you out. Uh, so this is a fantastic feature. I wish they would set this as the default to be on, but it's not. So you might want to turn this feature on. Now, moving out of that, I want to go to FM over here and just kind of show you that you do have, of course, HD stations and your standard stations. And as far as, you know, getting to something you like, when you find a station you like, let's say it's this one right here, I press and hold, and then it sets that station for me. So very easy to understand and use. I think most of us get how this works. AM is set up the exact same. Now, let's talk about the smartphone connection here for a second, uh, because what they've done different this year, they set it up to where it's a wireless connection, meaning you don't have to plug into the USB to connect up to Android Auto or Apple CarPlay. So if I select this button, it's gonna say, would you like to connect a new device? Which yes, I would like to connect a new device. From here, it's gonna give me the directions depending on which one I'm using. Now I'm an Android based user, so I would be doing this. So it would tell me, okay, first I need to turn on my Bluetooth. So let me make sure my Bluetooth is on. So the first thing I do, okay, it looks like my Bluetooth is on, fantastic. Now I need to search for the car. So from there, I would hit pair new device so that it can start searching uh, for the vehicle. Now it's labeled right here. It says, look for hands-free link. Once hands-free link pops up, you can then select it and it will connect up to the car uh, and you can start the process of using Android Auto or Apple CarPlay. Now, if you're an Android Auto user, I will remind you that you do need to download the Android Auto app. If you've never done it, you can go to the Play Store and get it. So be aware of that. And what it's going to look like as far as logo goes is right there. So just to make life a little easier on you to understand that. Now, if you're an Apple based user, you're not going to need to do that step. You can simply connect up and start moving forward. All right, so once you've paired up, the first question he's gonna ask you is actually a really important one related to Honda Link Assist. So it's gonna say in the event that you get into a collision, they can try to contact you. If they can't reach you, Honda can call 911 and essentially send somebody out to you. What's cool about this is one, it's 100% free, and two, they already know the VIN you're making model of your vehicle and the last GPS location of it. So it's just super helpful and to keep your family safe, I would highly recommend you enable it. All right, so when Android Auto pops up, you're probably gonna see a screen that looks similar to this. So for me, you can see that it pulled up my Google Maps, my last known addresses. You can see that I had Spotify running earlier. And then if I wanna jump into that main menu, I can press the round button right here and it'll pull up all my available options as far as what uh, available apps that I have that I can use with this. Now, with that said, there are a lot of apps out there that are compatible depending on what you like, whether you're into podcasts, whether you're into sports, whatever it may be. So let's take a second and I'm gonna throw 15 of the most popular apps that people use with Android Auto or Apple CarPlay up on the screen so that you can enjoy them. Now, with that said, let's talk about some of these apps that I typically use. Uh, as far as mapping systems, you can of course use Google Maps, you can use Waze, you can use Apple Maps, uh, you can use TomTom. Tom. So there's a lot of different options out there. Uh, audio wise, I'm a Spotify user, you can use Pandora. Uh, so it just makes it nice that I can pull up Spotify and be able to access my music and kind of go from there. Uh, so I love that you can do that, just start playing your music and be able to run through it and kind of enjoy how it goes, right? So it just makes it a much more seamless and I love that I don't have to work with a wire now where I can just set my phone down and tuck it away to where I don't have wires running all over the car while I'm doing things. So know that this is how Apple CarPlay and Android Auto works. You also have the voice command button over here and the one off the steering wheel to you know use voice command to say, hey, you know, play this, send a text that person, call that person, because I can place my calls out of here too, which I like using this a little bit more. The Android and Apple uh, platforms, I feel like their voice recognition systems work a little bit better than the Honda one does. So as far as making calls and doing things of that nature, I typically use this. So moving away from that, trip computer, I can access that same information over here that you could uh, on the dash. SMS text function will pull up your text and then read them aloud to you. So that's gonna be what you're seeing right here. Uh, I'm gonna jump back out of that. Uh, Sirius XM satellite radio, you get for 90 days and then after that be up to you if you wanna continue to use uh, this service. I wanna say it's around 10 bucks a month. I uh, know that you can negotiate with them. They'll usually work with you on that. AM we talked about earlier, compass. There is a compass in the car, uh, which I know I do get actually asked a lot more than I thought I would about having a compass in your vehicle, so know that you do have one. Uh, now, past that, 
uh, system updates. It can automatically update via Wi-Fi. Uh, Honda Link we talked about earlier as far as the enabling it to, as far as the safety feature goes, uh, depending on the level of the car that you have, you can also get some additional features as far as like being able to start the car up or be able to lock the doors from your phone, uh, depending on the trim level you pick. Now, most of those features are gonna land in those higher up models. So just be aware of that, but you can always go to hondalink.com to kind of learn a little bit more about this. So I'm not gonna go through this whole feature, but just know that's what the basics of it are. Now, the car does have USB, so I can play music out of them. Uh, so if I wanted to throw a USB in there that had a ton of songs on it, I could absolutely do that and then have another way to listen to audio. Related to kind of your center area here, you do have a wireless phone charger that comes in the 2.0. So I can slide my phone in there uh, and allow it to charge for me. So I love that it has that and being that you have uh, Apple CarPlay and Android Auto wirelessly now, I can kind of tuck it away, right? I don't have to have things floating around and kind of attached everywhere. So I love that feature about this car. And then I do have two USBs inside of here and a 12 volt power outlet, right? So I could run two USBs and have something else running off of like a, a plug-in deal. So anytime you're shifting through, it's always gonna light up for you and let you know what you're doing. So it makes it real easy to understand what, where I'm at as far as park, reverse, neutral, drive. Now over here, I've got two different buttons. I've got an Econ button, which when engaged, it'll throw a green leaf up on in the dash. And basically what this does, it's gonna improve the gas mileage of the car, which is 22 in the city and 32 on the highway, combined is 26. Um, so this will increase that, but how it works is it's gonna not give you as much off the pedal when you gas it and go and it's gonna affect your AC unit. So it's gonna kind of limit some things underneath the hood uh, and in the car to help give you that better gas mileage. Now the complete opposite of it is gonna be this sport mode. When I engage sport mode, it's gonna rev at a higher RPM, giving me more get up and go, but I'm gonna give up some of that gas mileage. So these kind of play against each other, but depending on if you wanna have more fun or if you're really taking a longer trip and you're trying to focus on saving a little bit of money, these kind of can play roles for you. Now below that, I've got my electronic parking brake. All I gotta do is pull up with my foot on the brake and it'll engage it and it'll show me the red LED or put my foot on the brake, press down, and it will release for me. Now past that is the brake hold button. Now the function of this button is if I have it engaged, what will happen is it'll show hold in the dash. Now what it allows me to do is while the car's in drive, I can then release my foot as you can see and, and the car's not rolling forward. Now when I want to move forward, I could press the gas pedal, it'll un uh, unleash the brake or unlock it, and we can start to roll forward. Let's say we're in a drive through line or we're in stop and go traffic, I come to another complete stop. Once I do, it then shows me the hold option in the dash, and now I can release my foot again. So this is more of a convenience feature, uh, but it's good for like drive throughs so long as you have your seatbelt on, guys. If you take your seatbelt off, this is gonna disengage, and you'll see how this works in just a second. If I take it off, immediately what it does is it throws the parking brakes on me and starts to alert me, as you can hear, to let me know, hey, the car's in drive, but we've thrown on the parking brakes so that you don't roll into the car in front of you. Now, I wanna talk about the backup camera in this car. So when I throw the car in reverse here, you're gonna see the backup camera pop on. It's got a nice clean display that's pretty easy to use. And as I cut the wheel, I've got dynamic guidelines meaning that they will cut with me. So you can see it cutting with me. And I've got three different views here. So I've got a wide angle view that's gonna give you about 170 degrees of uh, you know sight. I've got a classic backup camera, normal view, no manipulation of the camera. And then one aim straight down so if I'm backing up to something. So to kind of show you how I could use this. So let's go ahead and throw the car in reverse and we're gonna back up here. So where it plays a role is, I'm gonna back up over here to this curb, but when I get close to it, sometimes it's hard to tell, hey, where am I at in relation to that curb? So when you start to get kind of close, what you can do is you can flip over views. So this way I can see if I'm backing up to a, you know, a pole, if I'm in a parking garage or anything like that, I can get right up to it and know exactly where I'm at. Now, this is gonna be about six inches from your bumper, uh, and this is gonna be about two and a half feet. So that way it kind of helps you understand where you're at in relation. Um, now, I'm gonna move back forward just so we can kind of see a couple other features here. Uh, and I can get the glare off of our eyes here. So as I'm back in reverse here, I do wanna point out also that you have cross traffic monitoring, meaning that if this is on, which is lit up blue when it is on, if a car is coming from my left or right, I'll get an audible alert and it'll show arrows on the screen to let you know, hey, there is somebody coming from that direction. So if you're parked in between two SUVs or trucks, it'll help alert you and help give you that additional visibility because it does have sensors off the two corners of the back end of the vehicle. All right, guys, so that's kind of the quick rundown to the 2021 Honda Accord Sport, uh, and specifically the 2.0. So just things to remember is that this car does get 22 in the city and 32 on the highway. As far as an MSRP goes, this car starts at 32,865. As far as a crash rating goes, it is a five-star overall. Uh, so just something to know if you're looking at this car, and there are a lot of safety features in this car to help protect you and of course your family or loved ones or anybody else who may be in the car, whether it may be somebody that you don't love as much, but you don't want them to die, right? Uh, so dark joke, but had to do it, right? So what I would tell you about this car is the first thing is let's talk about what the difference is between the 1.5 and the two liter. So I'm gonna throw it up on the screen here so you can see, hey, if I drop down to the 1.5, 
2.5, what are the features that I'm actually losing out on or giving up? Because I think that's important to understand, hey, this is something that I may wanna look at. Now, a reminder there is that there is gonna be a price difference from that 1.5 uh, to the two year. So I also wanna throw that up on the screen so you can understand, hey, what is the pricing difference if I'm comparing these two? So that way you can kind of see and compare and understand, hey, are all those features worth X amount of dollars for you, right? Now, moving past that, we talked about uh, miles per gallon as far as its competition. So I'm gonna throw that back up on the screen so that you can kind of look at that again and understand, hey, if I wanna move uh, into a different model, different trim, different you know vehicle other than a Honda, what's out there and what is it competed as far as miles per gallon. Now let's also talk about horsepower. So I'm gonna throw the horsepower back up on the screen too, uh, so that you compare those so you can get an understanding for, hey, horsepower might play a role if I'm looking at a performance-based car like in a Honda Accord Sport, specifically the 2.0. Uh, now past that, of course, there is price. Price is important. So I'm gonna throw the MSRP of this car along with some of its competition out there uh, so that you can kind of compare that and look at that too. So that when you're thinking about these features and as far as miles per gallon and horsepower and all these things, you can understand, hey, where does cost land in all of this? Now outside of that, I will say that this is a fantastic car and if you're looking for a honda accord you want something a little bit sportier and you want some more horsepower this is a great option and available to you uh, and at 32 a65 i don't think you're doing that bad i think there's gonna be a lot of vehicles that would be more expensive uh, that might not do as well on other things like insurance i think you're gonna find that you're gonna save money there and then cost of ownership typically on hondas is much more affordable than some of the other vehicles that are out there uh in the market other than that i hope that this helped you out i do have a couple favors to ask you one i hope that you'll like the video so click that like button for me Two, I hope that you'll leave a comment. So go ahead and post something. Let me know what you think. Uh, do I talk too fast? Do I stutter? Do you wish I'd wear different shirts? Do I smell funny? Do I look funny? I don't know. You let me know what your thoughts are or if there's something you wish I would have went over. Now, third, I hope that you'll share the video. Share with others out there. Uh, maybe you got some friends that are in the Honda Accord group on Facebook or something that might want to know a little bit of what I just went over. Share it with them. Let them know what they think. Uh, and then lastly, hit that bell. If you want more notifications on when I post videos, I hope that you'll do it. I would love to notify you and let you know more about Hondas as we move forward. Other than that, I just want to say thanks for watching and later guys!